Hi folks, hope you're okay. We're looking at this book, uh, Christology in the Making, uh, James Dunn. I don't believe or agree with everything Dunn says. He's not orthodox evangelical, believing the full inspiration of the Bible, so I'm not endorsing his theology. But he's a top academic, and if you're going to study G historical Jesus studies, you need to have read or engaged with old James G. D. G. Dunn, who is still going today. Um, he writes, The other imme intermediate figures most prominent in our inquiry, spirit, wisdom, word, are improperly so-called since they never really reached the status of divine beings independent of God in Jewish thought. The all remain in the literature of our period final included ways of speaking of God, powerful interactions with his world and his people. God's experience eminence through nature and revelation in Torah, prophet and saving act which yet did not infringe on his transcendence the pre-existence is the pre-existence of god of god's purpose to create and redeem however much the language used of them may depict them as independent entities it never rises above the vivid metaphors of poetic poetic magic imagery of hebrew thought the attempt by those accustomed to more prosaic language to find a middle way between poetic personification and wholly independent entity by speaking of hypostasis merely exhibit a failure to appreciate the vigour of Hebrew poet imagery as well as the importance of a category hypostasis whose technical meaning only developed later which would have been meaningless to pre-Christian Judaism. And though parallels can be found in the wider religion of pagan polytheism, particularly for the way of speaking of divine wisdom, they show only that Jewish writers knew how to present their faith in the one God and his law in a way that was attractive to their hearers, not that the writers concerned regarded wisdom in the way as worshippers of Isis regarded Isis. Uh, once again, it was most probably Christian's identification of Jesus as God's wisdom and God's words which led to these concepts being drawn into subsequent Gnostic speculation as titles for emanation from the unknown God. In short, we have found nothing in pre-Christian Judaism or the wider religious thought of Hellenistic world which provides sufficient explanation of the origin of the doctrine of the Incarnation. No way of speaking about God, the gods or intermediary beings which, so far as we can tell, would have given birth to this doctrine apart from Christianity. With similar beliefs concerning heavenly redeemers did emerge it more likely that the influence ran the other way with Christian claims concerning Christ before providing the catalyst for the other systems and cults. Again, it, it seems to be that he's seeing the uniqueness of the incarnation of Christ. That he doesn't get a sense that the surrounding Jewish and Hebrew, uh, Jewish and Hellenistic culture, that there were ideas of uh, uh, God incarnates. It seems to be unique to the Christian faith. Um, I think the wisdom literature, uh, the literature or in, in Proverbs, where it talks about uh, wisdom and wisdom being at the beginning of time I do think that hints to um, divinity although if in Jewish context um, it wouldn't be seen as that but I think that can be used as a hint <coughs> excuse me I mean if you if you turn to Proverbs 8 <coughs> excuse me Doth not wisdom cry, and understand, put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of the high places, by the way, in the place of the pass. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming, at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O you simple, understand wisdom, and you fools, be you of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of an excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things, for my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips all the words of my mouth are in righteousness there is nothing forward or perverse in them they are all plain to him that understandeth for wisdom is better than rubies i wisdom dwell with prudence 
and find out knowledge of witty invention. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogance and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting till the beginning of, of the earth was. So, the, the wisdom there uh, in Proverbs 9, in a Jewish context, it's wisdom connected to God. But I think that it does point to uh, the wisdom of Christ, that Christ the eternal wisdom that flows as God and from God. What do you think?